Now, CBC recently did speak with an Afghan Canadian who still has family in the country, and she says Canada's acceptance of 20,000 refugees is not nearly enough. 20,000 is not enough. As I mentioned, we have 300,000 people displaced at the moment. 20,000 it seems nothing in comparison, in comparison to the, the, what we're seeing on the ground. One, also, the country, country the borders are closed. Um, consulates and embassies are closed their offices. We only have one passport processing office center in, in the whole country. Uh, and, and so how, how, are we, how are we getting them out? Now, the Taliban resurgence is raising fears that women's rights could be all but eliminated in Afghanistan once again. During their brief rule in the late 1990s, the Taliban closed schools for girls and women were not allowed to work in most professions. Women were also forced to cover themselves from head to toe and any woman accused of adultery was tortured publicly. Now, according to the United Nations Refugee Agency, nearly 250,000 Afghans have recently fled their homes, 80% of whom are women and children. So for more on this, we're now reaching out to Murwarid Ziai, the Senior Director of Canadian Women for Women in Afghanistan. A thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me, Michael. Uh, I want to begin with the situation on the ground right now. What are you hearing from women in Afghanistan and those who have fled? Um, I must say that um, the messages I am receiving from women uh, under uh, pro the provinces under control of Taliban and also from Kabul and some areas not under control of Taliban is devastating. To this morning, I um, opened my chat box and receiving messages from women in, from Herat, the province under fall of Taliban, and also Kandahar saying that this might be my last message their last message but this means uh, they are under uh, Taliban pressure they are hidden uh, Taliban are searching for them uh, home by home um, they might um, lose internet connection cell phone connection and they wanted me and they wanted all the women who have access to uh, outside the world to raise their um, concern about their safety and what's happening and tell their story, what's happening to them um, in those provinces. Women in Kabul, um, they, they, they are lost, they don't know what to do, but they fear that um, maybe next hour, maybe next 24 hours, they will um, face the same situation that women are now currently experiencing in Herat or, or Kandahar or other provinces. Women are killed, women are tortured, um, they are turned to sex slaves of Taliban, um, what else can happen to these women? Now, as we said, the, the Canadian government is talking about evacuating 20,000 citizens out of Afghanistan and bringing them to Canada. What do you make of that effort? Is it enough? It's not enough. Absolutely not enough. We, uh, women's rights activists, for the past nearly two, two years, we warned the international community, government of Canada, United Nations, NATO, U.S. government that uh, the, the situation will turn in, in a way that you cannot uh, you cannot prevent uh, if the human crisis and today the the picture we were seeing for this past year is in front of us to in front of the world's leaders and this evacuation of a number of Afghans are not enough you know what what happens to millions of People who still stays behind, they don't have any possibility, any facility to, to get out of the crisis situation. They are devastated. They, they, don't, they don't have even a male um, member in their family to protect them. So um, how does 20,000 would be enough uh, to, to just rescue 20,000? What about others who stays behind? What about who fought for all these years for... They had full rights and they enjoyed that right. They dreamed for a stable country, uh, but we are left in the middle of nowhere. I hate to say it, but the situation is increasingly getting dire for people who helped Canadian forces on the ground in Afghanistan. As you know, capital cities are falling right now in the country back to the Taliban. Uh, the Canadian uh, government is sending forces over to evacuate embassy staff. Is there enough time to evacuate the people that you're talking about? We are running out of time. 
as you might follow, then I also watched on your news now about um, uh, the only out, the only way out of Afghanistan is through the um, uh, Kabul airport, and uh, that's uh, uh, there's there's no way to get out of this number of people um, through that airport because of rushes and and. Uh, the process of even uh, processing their documents and, and getting um, air uh, air flight ticket to get out of the country is seems so impossible. And you know what all these means that they are trying so hard, um, they will fill in the hands of Taliban and, and, and there is no way to rescue them. There is only one way to do that is to get back to Afghanistan, get back to Kabul, at least start uh, your presence in Kabul and then clean up the neighboring provinces and the other provinces. Without that, without that uh, military interference from international community, without the uh, air, sub, uh, air Force support from international community, uh, um, Kabul will fall down in, in the hands of Taliban very soon, very soon that you cannot even imagine. It is the United States that's drawing back most recently out of Afghanistan right now. Uh, at this point, what do you want the Canadian government to do to lobby the U.S.? Uh, use any means of pressure on the United States, um, any means of pressure on the United Nations. This is the time that uh, in the globe leaders, including Canada, we see Canada as a powerful um, government. And uh, it's their responsibility to, uh, to push the United States through uh, all the political pressures they have um, through, through their alliances around the world. Um, to stop this uh, humanitarian crisis that's happening. When they, you know what Afghanistan became, when Afghanistan became the um, a home, of, a home of terrorists and home groups and they attacked Af American sites from there. You know what, it's not far that they will do it again. It's not about our, our safety and security only, it's about the safety and security of the region and the world. And no one is taking care of that. No one is taking serious this matter. Afghanistan is drawing in blood, and the world is watching silently. Mudwarid, I appreciate this has not been an easy conversation, but thank you for speaking with us. We appreciate it. Thank you.